Welcome to worship at Zion UCC in Union, Missouri. We are so glad that you are here. I hope everybody has heard the good news that we have a new baby in the congregation. Nora Jo Knobloch was born Friday, May 7th. So the whole family is doing well and they should be coming home soon. So let's congratulate Pastor Nicholas and Kaylee on the new life. Please join me in the call to worship. God speaks to the heart. God enlivens the mind. God awakens all spirits. God nurtures our strength. God calls the whole world. Let us pray. Creating spirit, we join with the chorus of all creation to celebrate your wondrous deeds. Fill us with the joy and train our ears for harmony so that we may contribute to the world you are already creating. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, who revealed what is possible through love. Amen. The first reading of the scripture is actually one of my favorites. Psalm 98, it's taken from the Common English Bible. Sing to the Lord a new song, because he has done wonderful things. His strong hand and his own holy arm have won the victory. The Lord has made his salvation widely known. He has revealed his righteousness in the eyes of all the nations. God has remembered his loyal love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Every corner of the earth has seen God's salvation Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. Be happy. Rejoice out loud. Sing your praises. Sing your praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of music, with trumpets and a horn blast. Shout triumphantly before the Lord, the King. Let the sea and everything in it roar, the world and its inhabitants too. Let all the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains rejoice out loud all together before the Lord because he is coming to establish justice on earth. He will establish justice in the world rightly. He will establish justice among all the people fairly.
Please join in the centering prayer. God of ceaseless new beginnings, we rejoice that through your powerful love, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. Free us to trust in you that we may live in the confidence of your children. In the resurrection, you have opened the gates of eternal life. Free us from the fear of death that we may serve you with courage. Through the presence of Jesus Christ among us, draw us into a community of freedom, hope, and love. Our second reading of scriptures from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31, is from the New Revised Standard Version. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord, but he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God.
Today's sermon is a collection of testimonies from several United Church of Christ leaders about the physical and tactile signs they saw throughout the world in this Easter season. Reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As God has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it on my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In today's text, the disciple Thomas yearned for a physical, tactile sign of Christ's resurrection. So I asked a few of my conference minister and national staff colleagues if they would reflect on what those physical and tactile signs they were seeing throughout the world in this Easter season. What follows is just a few of those testimonies. Hear these words from the people of God to the people of God. Good evening. I am the Reverend Dr. Edward Davis. I serve as the Conference Minister of the Southern Conference, United Church of Christ. In this Easter season, we are reminded again in John's Gospel of the story of the Doubting Thomas. Thomas was the disciples who did not um, show up with the other disciples after Jesus had been resurrected. And Thomas said to the disciples after hearing that Jesus had risen, he said that unless I see the physical evidence, unless I'm able to touch him, to touch the wounds, unless I'm able to see the those wounds, I will not believe it. Well, Jesus shows up on another occasion, and yes, Thomas was there. 
And Jesus says, Thomas, touch my hand. Touch my wounds. This is me. I'm here. And upon touching, Thomas believed. And Jesus says, blessed are those who, having not seen, yet they believe. That's our faith, brothers and sisters, at work. And in this Easter season, we are seeing evidence of the resurrection of Christ among us, the people. We are seeing people being vaccinated. We are seeing people returning to work. We are seeing, yes, the lifting up, up from depression. And, and we are seeing evidence of Christ among the people. Can you not believe that we will be restored? Can you not believe that there will be a resurrection in our society, even now as we speak? But we have to have faith. Even though we do not see the physical evidence of a restoration or a resurrection in our society, we must believe that we will, we will be resurrected in spirit. And so no matter how bad, no matter how bad things are in your life right now, you are right around the corner from a resurrection. So I leave you with this prayer. May the light of God surround you. The love of God unfold you. The power of God protect you. And the presence of God watch over you. Always remember that no matter where you are, having not seen, you believe that God is there. God bless you. Thank you. Where I live in northern New England, spring is notoriously tardy. I have led many an Easter sunrise service in snow boots in my parka. And yet, the longer I live in this climate, the more I have come to appreciate the often hidden, mostly missed harbingers of hope. Sometime in late February, the soundtrack outside my window changes. Joining the raspy crow voices or red-winged blackbirds and chickadees, and even the occasional enthusiasm of a pileated woodpecker. The flock of turkeys that wanders through our yard pause while the toms display themselves in all of their feathered glory and the hens ignore them. Willow trees ever hopeful strain toward life. Beech trees seem to glow from within. The sap rises in maple trees and signals the time for the annual ritual of sugaring. Where do I find tactful, tangible experiences of resurrection? They are all around. This is the season that encourages my own resurrection journey. As the snow melts, I walk our property, seeing where branches and whole trees have come down. And I am reminded that there are places in my own life that have died and need to be let go. My times of meditation often send me looking for new green shoots arising within when I have the patience to see. I have experienced this long year of COVID like yearning for a season that is so delayed it might never come. This is a harsh climate we inhabit. It takes its toll on our physical and mental health. It strains our family relationships. It aches in hunger and homelessness and loneliness. And yet, even here are the small, easily missed signs that point us to resurrection. I sometimes imagine Thomas as a Vermonter who understands things best when they are in his hands. If resurrection is real, then it must be something to see and hear, taste and smell. It must be felt in the changing winds when the turning of the seasons evokes an answering cry in our souls. 
the signs of resurrection are here for the finding. Tucked in neglected corners, shining in a ray of sunlight, tugging at us in a child's cry. Even in this difficult time, even now. My name is Noel Anderson with the UCC National Collaborative on Immigration, and I'm sharing reflections on John 20, 19, 31, this Easter. When we look at this scripture, we think of doubt often as something to try to conquer. But what if doubt is not something to be ashamed of or to try to overcome? What if it is a critical part of our faith? What if when we are unsure is when we are forced to seek deeper. It's only when we're honest about our fears that we can actually face them. And when we are give voice to the lack of faith that we experience, that we're able to find Jesus in new ways. After a year of facing the pandemic, political turmoil, racial injustice, children in need at the border, how can we not have our doubts? But through all our fears, throughout the doubt, we find our faith and new voice to give witness. When we understand that the bodily resurrection is representative of our renewed commitment towards collective salvation, collective liberation, then we can recommit to fight for justice and to walk hand in hand in this search for redemption. As the United Church of Christ Minister for Disabilities and Mental Health Justice, I like to say that I preach with the Bible in one hand and disability theology in the other. Disability and mental health justice theologies are the lenses for which I view scripture. And today's passage, thinking about Thomas and Thomas's encounter with Jesus, I am mindful of the powerful words of Jesus to the disciples. Peace be with you. Jesus said that the first time he appeared after the resurrection to the disciples gathered in the house. And Jesus says it again the second time Jesus appears. Jesus says, peace be with you. And the second time Thomas is there to hear these powerful words of peace. Where I see the power of God's love and liberation is in the encounter Thomas has with the risen Savior. For through the lens of disability theology and through the interpretation of Nancy Eastland, she tells us that there Thomas and others encounter a God fully embodied in the experience of being a whole person. That there God in Christ is fully human, showing up with hands and feet that are impaired, revealing to us the disabled God, that Jesus, the resurrected Savior, shows us marks of impairment, and that in this way, the disabled God is not only the one from heaven, but the revelation of true personhood, underscoring the reality that full personhood is fully compatible with the experience of disabilities. I see signs of the risen Christ in places in the United Church of Christ that are fully inclusive of people living with disabilities. When we turn to virtual worship and we thought about people who needed closed captioning, there I saw the resurrected God. And as we continue in our life together in this season of Eastertide, I pray that all of our churches will continue to work for justice and inclusion for all, creating worship 
and experiences as a faith community that are accessible to all, making accommodations joyfully, and empowering leaders at every level of the church who live with disabilities and mental health challenges. Peace be with you, and may we continue to work together to build a more just world for all, especially people with disabilities and mental health challenges. Dear ones, as I asked my colleagues in the national setting and conference minister colleagues to share, now I turn to you and ask you right now, when so many of us have been physically isolated from one another for so long, what physical tactile signs of Christ's resurrection do you see this afternoon? Please share those in the comments and with one another in the next few minutes. Let us pray together the prayer Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. I hope you enjoy your special day and let's hope it clears up a little bit so we can enjoy it. I just want to highlight a few announcement, announcements, but most of them are on the pink sheet, so please take those home with you. Um, we are continuing the Church World Service Blanket Month and the uh, paperwork is down on the table in the lower comments. If you'd like to donate, that would be great. And we're encouraging people to start to wear their name tags so that Pastor Nicholas can get to know us better. And then next Sunday is Youth Sunday, and we will also recognize our high school graduates, so we encourage all of you to come to the service next Sunday. And then after worship on next Sunday, Reverend Nicholas and Alicia will be meeting with all the currently sixth grade through and up who have not been confirmed and they would like to be confirmed. They will meet with their parents in the chapel. All right. Like a shepherd tending to those in their care, God has offered us rest and renewal, protection and mercy, love and nourishment. In response, we are invited to give a portion of our time, energy, gifts, and prayers so that others in this world may experience the same. Let us pray a blessing on our gifts as we dedicate them to God. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Loving God, bless these gifts and all the ways in which we give. May each of our gifts be a part of co-creating and tending to the love, safety, belonging, and dignity you envision for the world.
Friends, imagine what is possible. Imagine what our community would feel like if our own hearts embraced the unconditional love of God. The unconditional love God has for us. Imagine what the nation would sound like if our words echoed the inclusive love God has for us. Imagine what the world would look like if our actions reflected the unwavering love God has for us. Go forth from this place to transform possibility into reality and to join alongside God in transforming the world through love.